scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. It takes the oil and the vessel for a miracle to happen, not the oil alone. The oil and the vessel. And the oil will always assume the size of the vessel. If the vessel is small, the oil will look small. I think we should turn this, this charge to a prayer point already. Father, expand my understanding. Lift your voice and pray. Expand my understanding. Someone is praying. Expand my understanding. Expand my understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we pray that you will help us this morning grant us illumination in Jesus name okay please be seated I want you to get something to write and then please be prepared to listen um, yesterday was the crusade this is a leadership summit so I just want to speak a bit on leadership I think many believers respectfully speaking do not really understand the concept of kingdom leadership and I hope that uh, the brief moments that we we'll share together in addition to all that you have learned will construct or reconstruct your understanding as far as influence is concerned hallelujah no eye has seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for you so you submit to his work in you till Christ is formed in you. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ be formed in me your wisdom reveal through me your glory rests on me so I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me may this song be your testimony that something about your understanding will cause the nations to stand in awe of the grace and the glory of the Lord that is upon your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Let's start with Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60 says, Arise, shine, it says, for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I always would like to quote this scripture from Amplified. Let me quote it from Amplified. Then we read the remaining verses we're reading, hopefully to four. It says, arise from the depression. In fact, this is, I don't know what version of Amplified is this. 
but then it says arise from the prostration and the depression that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light i like that rendition then he says for your light is come and the glory the brilliance this one says of the lord is risen upon you let's go to verse 2 you can go back to kjv it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you shout a loud amen. amen as a result it says gentiles verse 3 shall come to your light you will not go and look for them it says they shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising let's look at verse 4 it says lift up your eyes round about and see they gather themselves together they come to thee thy son shall come from afar and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy sight all because of light arise and shine it says for your light has come the most expensive commodity in the kingdom second only to the blood of jesus is light let me take it again the most expensive commodity in the kingdom second only to the blood of jesus is light you are only as wealthy in the kingdom to the degree to which you have this scarce but powerful currency called light hallelujah if you are given dollars or pounds or whatever currency we call them hard currencies on earth and if someone says i have a million dollars you say wow this man is a rich man because he has a million dollars but in the realm of the spirit your wealth is not measured by physical things because the money you have is also a product the capital that buys that product you call money is what the bible calls true riches hallelujah yes and light is one of the principal commodities in the spirit that means when a man has access to light that man is rich in spirit and it will eventually express itself in every dimension of his life so in order of priority in pursuit of a glorious life your first port of call is the search for light are we together now here's how the bible puts it it says that the kingdom of god is like a man who lost his coin don't forget what he lost he lost coin is that true then the bible says he lit a lamp and took a broom began to sweep the room in search for it so when you are looking for what is missing the first thing you need is light are we together going around complaining about the fact that his coin is somewhere in the room the same way your treasures are somewhere on earth the same way your influence is all around but to be able to converge it to your place you will need light are we together light is very powerful john 1 5 the bible says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not provided you have light you have sustained the capacity for true dominion the bible says he made many lights genesis chapter 1 but then he made two great lights he says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night then he says he made the stars also so you cannot rule the day and rule the night except you have great light that the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light and you see the bible also says <laughs> he said weeping endures for a night is that in your bible that means for as long as there is the absence of light because the night time is characterized by the absence of light in fact here's how the bible puts it in genesis 1 he said he called the light day and the darkness he called night 
that means day is not just the chronological passage of time the daylight comes to you that is your day even if it is 12 midnight so you can be 12 noon physically and yet still be in your night time in the spirit and for as long as it is still night weeping is associated with night did you get what i said the bible says he called the light day the daylight comes to you that is your day grant us understanding in the name of jesus my philosophy on leadership was largely framed from a number of people fathers across the body of christ and then great intelligent philosophers that have lived but i think one of the greatest uh, leadership influence in my life was the late dr miles monroe he influenced me so powerfully in the area of purpose the kingdom and leadership he framed my understanding as to effective leadership to understand the principles of influence and i just want to share my heart with you for a few minutes and then we pray hallelujah i'm going to share with you a few things that will surprise you don't be too quick to write just listen and understand and then you will write the first thing i wrote down here is that true leadership is not just about leading people <laughs> this will surprise you because for the average leader or believer um could we have someone just manage our little ones thank you praise god now listen please true leadership if i ask you about leadership most times our idea of leadership or influence is a person leading other people and you are right but that is not the foundation of true leadership true leadership is not just about leading people true leadership i wrote here listen carefully is about releasing your god-given abilities true leadership is about releasing your god-given abilities and then using it to serve god and men to a point where through your character and your results men begin to follow you let me take it again that true leadership is not primarily about leading people it is about deploying your god-given abilities are we together now to serve god and to serve men and to serve it so excellently to a point where people begin to follow you through your character and your results and then they now allow you to influence them that is the true picture of leadership let me repeat myself and you understand it now that if you begin your leadership journey by looking for who will say yes sir to you you are already a defeated leader that leadership is not about finding people who you will lord over leadership is principally not about looking for people in fact the greatest leaders never started with people they started with visions they started with dreams and goals are we together they deployed the creativity the god-given ability within them they served god and men so excellently that people were willing to follow them and now to become loyal to them that is the true character and the true spirit of leadership the reason why many leaders are frustrated is because they feel until people are around you you are not a leader leadership is not about people people are the latter part of leadership even though more importantly but it starts with the deploying of your god-given abilities to serve god and to serve men are we together mark chapter one let's do a little reading considering the influence strategy of jesus let's begin our reading say from 32 mark 1 32 we'll read down to 37 please follow very carefully the bible says and at evening 
when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased everybody say results and them that were possessed with devils what did he do with them and the bible says all the city was gathered at the door take note the purpose for the gathering was that they discovered that there was a man who had uncommon results he could provide solutions in to a degree that they had never seen are we together now the next verse please and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils again shout results one more time say results the bible says and he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him 35 you will think that after such a great crusade he should gather the people and say from today don't leave me i am jesus the bible says while it was morning rising up a great while he departed from the same people look at the true spirit of leadership he departed from them to a solitary place and went to focus on doing what made him anointed in the first place to a solitary place and pray 36 then the bible says and simon and they that were with him did what followed after him who is the him the him producing results who is the him the him who is serving with his abilities with diligence and excellence read verse 37 and may that be a prophecy for you this is the ultimate measure of your leadership and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for you all men you may have heard me say it in my teachings there are some things when you have only your tribesmen will look for you there are things when you have only women will look for you there are things when you have only men will look for you there are things when you have only poor people will look for you but there are abilities that when you have all men all men includes all nations does that look like deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2 that it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all not some all the nations of the earth and that this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you hallelujah so that leadership is primarily not just about people it's about discovering your god-given abilities fueled by a sincere desire to serve god and to serve people and that you serve so exceptionally that someone observing you from afar through the dexterity of your character and your results they are compelled to give you the gift of loyalty that loyalty is as a result of they are being comfortable that the kind of result you produce is providing something that we call inspiration the word inspiration means to is to prime someone else's desire using your results are we learning now hear me leadership is about obtaining permission to influence people by deploying your gifts and abilities you obtain permission to influence people by deploying your gifts and abilities that means every time you deploy your giftings and abilities to serve it's like you are obtaining permission from people even a generation to be allowed to influence them let's talk about that word influence because leadership in one word is influence if your leadership does not translate to influence you are not in leadership let's define the word influence is God helping us this morning now please look up let me give you my definition of influence I define influence as the ability to compel men to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty is called influence the ability to compel men 
to buy into your ideologies without using force or cruelty so if i can propose my thinking to you if i can propose my way of life without manipulating you without using force or cruelty we say i have influenced you is someone hearing you cannot manifest true kingdom leadership without influence in fact one of the principal ways that the kingdom advances please look up there are two pillars as far as kingdom advancement is concerned number one is called evangelism number two is called influence if you have evangelism alone christ will be enthroned in the hearts of men but the territory will still be a place of decadence like it was in sodom and gomorrah lot was not a compromised man but sodom and gomorrah was influenced by a spirit that was not of god and he still suffered the consequence so it is not enough to be saved personally your territory must become safe to s-a-f-e and the tool that frontiers the kingdom territorially speaking is influence so you can make a territory to buy into the ideologies of the kingdom not by using force or cruelty your dressing today was a product of someone's influence you saw someone this is this is the whole idea behind advertisement they will never carry a failure to advertise a product because it is the intention is to get people to patronize that product and they are willing to spend millions of naira and dollars for someone who has results to now wear the product or whatever it is and that becomes you will be surprised the kind of sales that will come to that organization simply because someone of influence wore a product hallelujah the songs we sing the way we build the way we dress the way we live the way we talk are largely products of external influences and some of them we've not even met them there i don't watch football i used to watch and play football years ago but i had to sacrifice it for many other things praise god there are people called fans or fans of and and sometimes you pass a group of people who are arguing about football clubs and the zeal that these guys have you will be shocked and surprised and it looks as though they were in the same room with the footballer i saw him i know what i saw that level of certainty and they can dress like the footballers have you seen people clamor over the used shirts of footballers they call it original it doesn't matter how sweaty it is the fact that this man wore it and threw it and i held it they can sell that shirt for a million dollars that is the power of influence there are many people who used to behave well until they met an environment that began to plant in a wrong seed the first example of influence in the bible i don't have the time but the first example of influence in the bible was between the serpent and eve <laughs> the bible says when god created man and woman he gave them instructions that you can eat of the tree uh, everywhere but that which is in the middle of the garden you should not touch and then the bible tells us that the serpent was more subtle that's how it starts that the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field that the lord had created and that he came to eve we don't know how many times he kept coming to propose but he came with a proposal and said did god really say that in the day you eat of that fruit you will die he said certainly god said so he said let me tell you something you don't know god is insecure he's hiding something from you he knows that the day you eat of that tree you will become like god knowing good and evil then the bible says when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it could make one wise she ate and gave her husband who was there with them 
with her then the bible says their eyes were open influence there is no record of the serpent using a sword there is no record of the serpent tying down and say you must eat of this influence is very powerful you can make men do things say things and be things even without physical contact with them it then means that if we are to take over we must understand the spiritual technology that exalts us to a position where we can influence the mindset the thinking of a generation to become pro-christ evangelism is the first step but it does not stop there in addition to evangelism like we saw yesterday there are many people who will run to jesus because someone they love and admire ran to jesus there are many people who will run away from jesus because someone they admire said jesus was unnecessary every time i teach on influence i would always like to state this imagine if um just for for discussion michael jackson ever shouted jesus christ is lord even if it was a mistake he will win more souls than many crusades combined just for using his influence he's been dead many years and still their records still sell today more than many businesses that have been laboring even in prayer that is the power of influence are we together the late dr miles monroe would say the world is still being ruled by dead men the ideas of dead men is still what has kept living people trapped till today the philosophies that came whether governmental philosophies all kinds of ideas nations today ha, have been impoverished because of ideas that came from people that are long gone hallelujah i visited south africa many times and every time i'm there i'm amazed at the legacy that the late nelson mandela left for the people he so influenced that nation to a point that respectfully speaking it, it was almost as though if he were to be put in a class that is not human it would be better for you to offend someone than to touch and tamper with the legacies of nelson mandela i remember one time i was told that when south africa were trying to lobby I think to host the world cup or something like that there was all kinds of confusion and mandela was sent to go to the place of the negotiation as soon as he stepped there they all got up greeted him and that was the end of discussion can you imagine that influence it is god's desire that you get to a place where your appearance is like the manifestation of god to i'm not talking of human worship but that your life is so compelling you can make people to drop bad habits in a moment something about the dexterity of your life the quality of your carriage will compel people to begin to make noble decisions that just by the mere look at you many people begin to correct and reorder many things about their lives if you're with me say amen, amen. influence now kingdom influence very quickly is built on four pillars kingdom influence is built on four pillars or kingdom leadership if you want to use that expression kingdom leadership is built on four pillars you cannot be said to be a leader in the kingdom until your leadership is built on these four pillars are you ready now number one the first pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built on is called genuine love for god and men genuine love for god and men kingdom leadership is built upon this pillar genuine love for god and men let's look at a few scriptures very quickly matthew 22 from verse 36 matthew 22 from verse 36 we're reading to 40. let's walk together media so we can hurry up matthew 22 from verse 36 to 40. 
they asked jesus and they said master which is the great commandment in the law jesus responded by saying 37 we're reading down to 40. jesus said unto them thou shalt love the lord thy god with all your heart is that in your bible with all your soul and with all your mind 38 he says this is the first and great commandment next verse the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself and then it says on these two hang the entire law and prophets you know what that meant that the very purpose behind giving all those laws was at an attempt to help you keep these two things so every single law that was given in the old testament was a laborious attempt to bring you to a point where you love god and you love men so in loving god and loving men you have fulfilled the law are we together that on these two hangs the law and the prophets john chapter 10 please from verse 11 to 13. john chapter 10 from verse 11 to 13. jesus was speaking about kingdom leadership and here's what he had to say i am the good shepherd he says the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep is that in your bible he says but he that is a hireling and is not a shepherd whose own the sheep are not he seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep 13. he says the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and careth not for the sheep this is true for ministry is true for business is true for government that kingdom leadership at any level whether politically in the area of faith and ministry like we know in corporate life the moment you are talking about leadership from a kingdom standpoint it is predicated upon number one your love for god and your love for people please look up if you do not love people and you claim you love god the bible says you are a hypocrite it says how can you say you love god that you have not seen when you hate your brother there are many preachers respectfully speaking that do not love the people they lead there are many 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 leaders heads of government across nations you need to see how politicians and business people discuss at the negotiation table the interests of the people they lead is not there whatsoever what is in need for me has become the language of leadership in our world and that must change this is why summits like this have been put in place the bible talks about weak men who came to david in the cave of adulam men who were in debt men who were distressed they were weak people and david with compassion turned those people to become the mighty men of david you cannot be a true leader if you do not love jesus and you do not love people let me tell you one of the greatest secrets behind the grace of god upon my life is not just fasting and prayer and study of the word alone these things are very important and foundational but i can tell you sincerely i love god and i love people your bible says for god so loved the world the world of men for god so loved the world jesus stood and looked at the people there are two reasons two times jesus wept in the bible the first time he wept was in john chapter 11 from verse 35 he was at the grave of lazarus and the bible says jesus wept and seeing him weep they commented and they said oh how he loved him the second time jesus would weep he stood over jerusalem and the bible says he wept and said oh jerusalem if only you had known even in this your time the things that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hidden from you compassion many times the bible would tell you that jesus had compassion upon them the anointing that flowed from his life flowed through the gauge of compassion you must pray this morning and ask god for grace 
to be a compassionate person being a disciplined leader being a strict leader is not the same as being a wicked leader discipline is not the same thing as wickedness are we together there are many people in a in a bid to show that they are strict principled and disciplined they swing to the other side of the pendulum and what you see happen is pure wickedness there has to be a level of thoughtfulness and empathy that was what made the father to send jesus to us for god so loved the world that he gave hallelujah you want to become a kingdom leader that god will grant the grace to take over for his glory you must love god and you must love people you must love god you must love the people in your place of work especially those that god has brought as subordinates don't use people love people genuinely preachers we need to be careful this temptation of using people either for personal gains using people to manipulate them it is something that we must run away from there is a narrative that is being sold across the body of christ where you take advantage of the honor that people have for you and manipulate them into all kinds of things that must be avoided do not emulate those things in a bit listen carefully listen carefully if it is kingdom leadership you are interested in expressing can i tell you people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care let me repeat myself people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care and love is discernible you can discern genuine love there is a way you can rebuke a church member rebuke a fellow staff even though the rebuke is harsh they can see the genuineness and the purity of the love from whence the rebuke is coming from that is what makes them to receive it even though painful for instance the bible says he that the father loves he chastises so that chastisement is not coming from a standpoint of wickedness there are many parents today who are being hated by their children because their disciplinary actions when the children were small did not come from a standpoint of love it came from a standpoint of anger and hatred and there is a difference kingdom leadership is predicated on love hear me let me put a balance very quickly love is not the same thing as carelessness to allow things go wrong there are many parents for instance who have refused to discipline and train their children properly because they feel that anything that puts a measure of strictness on the children is compromising uh, uh, their perception of love no 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 you must love people enough to want them to rise you must love people enough to look beyond your reputation and see that what they need to learn they learn no matter how uncomfortable it is there are many uncomfortable messages for instance the one you heard before i just came while i was listening to the man say this i said wow this man has a lot of grace to be able to teach this because most times when you are teaching the truthfulness that is around giving people just frown at you and it looks like you are and i saw the confidence with which he was teaching and i said truly this man loves these people many people will consider their reputation above and beyond this is someone learning the question i have for you is who have you loved enough to see him saved or her saved who have you loved enough parents have you loved your children enough to look beyond yourself and consider their well-being there are many parents who can go around wearing clothes that are five times the school fees of a very good school for the child and send their children to schools that they don't they are not even learning anything true leadership please hear me is predicated on genuineness of love i love my people i love god's people i love the generation that god has sent me to i'm not just trying to be i'm not looking for in fact i'm not interested 
in celebrity lifestyle you know when people clap for me as i come sometimes there's nothing you can do about it but believe me my passion is not to be celebrated at the end of my life my desire and that which i desire to be accredited to me is the testimony of enoch that i love god with all my heart and i gave my best to inspire a generation to love jesus that's it hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you